Grace. Hello everyone, I am Benjamin. I am. And this is Gareth. Gareth. We used our real names this week. We've been using our our false Pseudonyms. names for for <laughs> for decades of video now. So congratulations um, to uh, oh wait we're we're not unveiling the winner yet. No. We're not quite there yet. So let's go through product evaluation number one one zero and one 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 one. It's all binary. It is like it's the totally future. totally futuristic right now. So anyway. This was a cool week. This was a really quick yeah, staff cool. evaluation, yeah. and it will be a quick DMV analysis post eval video because there were clear and distinct winners this week, yeah. and we cannot wait to tell you about them. For those of you who are new to product evaluation, we go through each and every one of the top ideas as surfaced by the quirky community, and we bring it through D, M, and V, design. What? Potential for wow factor, is it solving a problem? Will we want to design a world? Market, how big is the market? What do our retail partners think? <laughs> um, you know, can we really make a, a, a big splash in the marketplace? And then viability, um, can we manufacture it? Does it, um, is it a business we can compete in? All of that type of stuff. So, uh, D, M, and V, let's go through each and every idea, starting with Charles Bailey's expandable towel rack. Okay, so his submission is an expanding tower rack for when you have guests staying over. Like, you can choose if it's just one rack, two, or three. That was good. That was good. Okay, anyway, um, yeah, so this thing goes in the wall, comes out, boom, boom, boom. Yep. And you can hang multiple towels. Uh, community liked it. It went through, uh, this was the top rated community idea by far. Loved it. Nothing in the comp shop particularly unique, except there was something in the UK that was somewhat similar, uh, although kind of different. Yeah. We put it through DM and V, high scores. These are high scores. Yeah, good Design DM, good gave scores. it a six. Gave it a six. You uh, were the biggest downer on this thing. Yeah, biggest downer, but it's still a six. Still I mean, a six, still it. above average. Yep. Market gave it a seven. Loved it, thought we could compete. Thought it was a nice price point. Thought yep. we could go up market or down market, depending upon what people thought. Our retailers loved it. The viability, seven. We could totally make it, very simple mechanism. Uh, and Charles did a really good job of showing exactly how we can accomplish this goal. So it got a pre-staff total of 53. We then went on to Michael Taylor's kid-friendly pitcher number two rated community idea. Yep. Um, we've seen this a bunch. He changed things a little bit. He made the little bottom spout thing. You click it and it only... Yep. You know, it he serves. actually made it less unique. Ooh. Ouch! Just saying. Anyway, we, we put it through the comp shop. Um, the, there's, <laughs> there's some stuff out there, but nothing too similar. You know, we're, we weren't sure that, that Michael was actually solving the real problem. Um, you know, d d dexterity and, you know, you know, maybe there's smaller, you know, smaller pictures make them less heavy. I think if it or, had, the way, the way he's presenting it that has a spigot that's kid friendly, if it was, if it was engineered such that the kid just put a glass there and then it poured, that would be It's probably a way to do it, but does the world really need it? Design, you gave it a five, an average score. You gave it an average score, yeah. The market gave it a four, a little below average. Tupperware does have pictures just for kids. Um, you know, they're smaller, obviously, Michael's idea was to, have it work for both kids and yep. adults, but the problem is if you're going to create all this mechanism, the adult don't, adults don't need it, so why not just get a kid's uh, picture anyway? Viability gave it a six. We could totally make it. Some engineering challenges, but eh. Pre-staff total of a 46. Next. Mike Moncello, light up badminton birdie. Um, to be perfectly honest, we didn't even talk about this this much. Um, we felt like it was kind of kitschy yep. and off-brand, and uh, there is that an exact is. patent uh, for this, uh, uh, owned by Pro Performance. Uh, which is why we did not um, move, move forward. forward with the shuttlecock. Um, next idea came from Peter 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 Wachtel. This is the snack sippy sippity dippy dippity. Um, uh, pretty clear. We wanted to combine a sippy cup and a snack jar. Yep. Um, and we put it through. Uh, community had some comments. Amp didn't like it. Oh wait, and we put it through a comp shop. And there is something that exists called Mommy's Helper. Yep. Mommy's Helper, five bucks. Uh, Sip and snack, no spill, cup. Uh, combined sippy cup and snacks. Oxo is a tot flip snack club. Obviously doesn't have a sippy thing, but the mommy's helper does. DM and V. We gave it a three. Um, we weren't really convinced that the target, target age range uh, would be able to actually really, really hold this without spilling it. And uh, once you get into the age where you can hold it, you don't really need this kind of like coddling kind of device, you know? You can deal with like holding snacks and holding drinks. Market, they just plain simply said this exists and they don't know that they would want to be pounded on pavement to a retailer and showing them something that is way too similar to stuff out there. Viability gave it a six, we can make it. 
but there are patents out there, uh, really strong patents that combine both sippy cups and snack holders. So pre-staff total of a 41. Next idea was a collaboration, I think. Uh, Sandy Lear had the idea, and uh, Mr. Josh Wright did the rendering with some yep. awesome pumping music. We're like the mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anyway. That's good. Um, retractable shower curtain hooks. Uh, pull the shower curtain down, change and pull it back up. Yeah. Um, a lot of mechanism for something that's super simple. Um, a lot of mechanism times 12. Times for 12. Each one that for something have. that's super simple, it's supposed to be really cheap. The best ones out there are the ball bearing ones from uh, the Clipperton Company. And uh, that's the one a lot of people are using. She even had them in her video. Yeah, we um, designed gave it a four. Is it really an issue? Is it really going to be useful? How many times do you really take your shower curtain down and up for cleaning or changing? It's Mark, you gave it a five. Yep. Viability gave it a five. five. A lot of mechanism. Again, do we, is there enough here to like storm a retail and be like, this is going to change people's yeah. bathrooms? Yeah. Um, yeah we didn't necessarily think that was enough. the case. Uh, Pre-staff total of 42. Moving on to the next idea. This was our wild card this week from yep. Lori Hubs. A uh, really simple um, thing that you lay down jewelry holder. Yeah, it's um, for like traveling and like keeping your jewelry you, separate. You, uh, you attach the jewelry to the different things. Yeah. Roll it up, and a little band around it, beautiful. Um, you know, Linda said she's had one for years. Um, Gurav says it needs uniqueness from the other options. Yeah. We did find J. Crew makes one that's pretty similar. Yeah. It's not in the comp shop here, but uh, one of our employees brought it to our attention. They used to work at J. Crew, and, and J. Crew has something very similar. Yeah. Actually sold out on J. Crew's website, so maybe it is a good idea. But anyway, we put it through DMNV. The, the reality is, community only gave it a five, so this was a tough sell. But, yeah. Um, you know. We gave it a four, it solves the problem of traveling with jewelry. Um, very similar to stuff that's already on the market. We would have to like give it some kind of real like good Market gave it a six, it's a fairly big market. Viability gave it a six, we could do it. Um, there wasn't uh, much other meat there. The score wasn't necessarily that high, so we didn't talk about it that much. Free staff total of a 21. Yep. Uh, hey guys, this was a, a historic vote. Um, during staff evaluation, literally the first time in two years this has ever happened, to my recollection anyway. Yep. Um, every single Corgi staff member and visitor to today's product evaluation all unanimously voted for one, one, one product. One product idea. And, we all agreed. And we right all, from the beginning. As we well. all agreed. There and was, the community agreed too. Yeah. The community, um, right off the bat, um, gave this idea a, uh, a high score. Um, and listen, at the end of it, we all voted. Let's say, drum roll. Do your drum roll. Congratulations, Charles Bailey and your expandable travel uh, tower, towel rack. You are now a quirky <laughs> inventor. We are so pumped. We are proud of you. Um, it was great to talk to you tonight and let you know that you are a winner. Um, yeah. It's people like you that, that uh, make us feel really good about doing our job. We're pumped about your idea. This is going to rock. Retailers are going to love it. People are going to eat it up. We cannot wait to get our hands on this, and we'll see you in New York in a few weeks. So congratulations, Charles Bailey. Moving on to product evaluation number one, two, one, two, one. Um, this was our brief base project that uh, looked at barbecue accessories. We looked at seven ideas, I believe. Yep, we did. Um, and it started with a skew tisserie from Chad Maxey. Um, wanted to uh, create a, a motorized uh, kebab spinner. Um, we thought that was unnecessary. It's a little bit overkill. Yeah, I mean, you only really need to have to, I mean, I guess if you were slow cooking, but yeah. Um, we did have a lot of hardcore barbecuers here at Product Evaluation we this week. We, we brought them in, we brought in friends, we brought in um, staff members that we know are just avid barbecuers. And we, we consulted. Ferris has been barbecuing in the kitchen yeah. for we, the barbecue tool. We consulted with the top barbecue experts in our field. Uh, we talked to all the buyers at the retailers and yeah. so on. Um, they just thought that this was too much product for uh, too little of a problem. Uh, so we put it through DMV, sort of. Uh, um, Probably not much to talk about there. Really uh, <laughs> Put it through DMV, it was average scores and um, pre staff total of a 50. Moving on to the next idea, this was David Quirk's modular barbecue stand. Um, sort of looks like a hangman of, uh, of stands planted into the ground, either with a stake or with a weighted base, and uh, can hang your tools. Um, it could uh, hold your drinks yep. and all that, all that type of stuff. Um, you know, we, we put it through a comp shop. There is one thing that's really, really similar. Uh, from Maverick, barbecue uh, accessory organizer. Which seems like it would be less uh, stable because it's attached to your barbecue, making your barbecue top heavy, but. 
Yeah, I mean, that's, that, that could be the case. Yeah. Um, there, are, there are obviously other solutions out there. Um, nothing particularly exactly like David's, but um, holding the barbecue tools is obviously something that there's stuff out there. It got relatively high DMV V scores, all above average, yeah, yeah. with a six in design. You yeah. thought there was something there? Yeah, we found it was a simple solution. Could be used in different scenarios alongside your garden table, maybe even at the beach. Our retailers actually quite liked it. It was one of the ones yeah. that, that they liked. Uh, viability gave it a six. We could totally make it. We were just worried about the um, the over productizing this thing. I mean, with all the stuff involved. Um, Somewhat. Maybe I, that probably isn't the best way to describe what our hesitation was. Um, there, there was just sort of like a. I think it, some some of the hesitation was just yeah, that we're other like ideas that felt like there were better accessories. Yeah, yeah, maybe that was the case. I have a hard time explaining why we didn't like this. Um, when I said that, it didn't even feel right. So, I mean, yeah. the, the, the bottom line is that there's, there was something here. We just didn't think it was the best thing here. Moving on to the next idea. This is Tyrell Hatfield's barbecue grape mover. Uh, this was a, a, a prime example of searching the Google a little bit. Yeah. Um, this exists. It exists. One, it exists. Two, it exists. Three. It exists. Three, four, and six on design, market, and viability with yeah. a pre-staff total of a 39. The next idea was a rotating barbecue grate from Jason Hennessy, um, which uh, we just didn't think was the best use of geometry. No, a lot of barbecues are square or rectangular. Um, and again, if you properly heat your barbecue, uh, you don't need to move everything. Well, you do get hot spots and cold spots. Yeah, I mean, if... In like, I mean, but is this the best way of actually like manipulating the food? And it's only one more, it's another thing to like clean up. Another afterwards. thing, and you're gonna put in a thing and... and um, yeah, there wasn't much out there exactly like this, um, but it got kind of clobbered in, in design and market scores for, yeah. for each. And then viability gave it a seven. Because um, I'm sure we could do it, but yeah. whatever. Now this idea came from Chris Mancini, um, and there's actually a, the owner of, of an idea called Stuffs, um, which is Stuffs Your Hamburgers, actually contacted us because Chris was using images from their website, which we take very, very seriously. Um, and uh, we, uh, upon hearing about the fact that he stole images, um, or borrowed images, or stole, whatever you want to say, uh, we also saw their product, uh, which is oddly similar, obviously, for fully, fully sized uh, burgers, yeah. not sliders. And then the other difference is Stuffs does one versus the five. But that's that Chris, not enough that Chris to make wanted. But is that, yeah, is that enough to actually build a product? Yeah. Um, so uh, we liked it in DMNV, that, that we did DMV scores before we uh, had the Stuff stuff uh, yeah. brought to our attention. So it got a pre-staff total of 44, but that's probably generous. Uh, and the next idea was a grease grabbing serving tray. We love this one. It's from Tim Hayes. We yep, thought it was a great idea. Uh, yeah, so uh, running it through a community, um, they thought it was simple and functional and could, could work well for cooking inside as well. I thought um, that there was a good marketing play there with yeah. the health, health side of things yeah. as well. Um, there wasn't really yeah. anything. Yeah, I mean, they were just kind of comparing it to other trays that allow dripping. Grease. Exactly. Um, Design gave it a six. Um, it, even if it isn't actually healthier eating, it feels like it's healthier eating. It uh, would be a fully functional tray for carrying food, uh, raw food to the barbecue and then so, uh, keeping the, the cooked food as well. So it's like a, a multifunctional tray. The market and viability didn't have any, anything too obnoxious to say. Um, solves a problem, good market. It's a clear value proposition. Um, you know, Viability said we could probably make it. You know, obviously we had to do some material studies, etc. Pre-staff total of a 39 on Tim Hayes's grease grabbing serving tray. And that was the first. That was the first wild of two cards. wild cards. The second wild card came from uh, Christine Torpy with her two-tiered barbecue tray. Um, this uh, awesomely uh, condensed unit that has two different trays has attachments off the sides. Yep. You can bring raw meat, finished meat. You basically carry this thing out in the barbecue. You do your jam and then you bounce, yeah. uh, and everything's there. All your tools, all your supplies, all your cleanup stuff, all your cooking stuff. And you can organize different hierarchies, like tools on top, food on it's bottom. It's all there. It's self-serve barbecue shenanigans. Yeah. Um, listen, we put it through dm &V. It got a pretty high score. Uh, six on design, yeah. seven on market, 
Six on viability. Design liked it. Why? We liked it because it felt like it was kind of the toolbox of barbecue accessories. Like it yeah, really you're just come outside, helpful. you got all your shit. And yeah. in, in the best case scenario, this is really going to help the entire workflow of barbecuing. Boom, you bring it out outside. How many times you walk in and out of the house? Uh, in and out, get the stuff. Oh, yeah. I forgot the, the spatula. Oh, I forgot the paper towels. Yeah. Oh, I forgot the raw meat. Oh, I'm done cooking. I need another tray. Right. This seemed like a real solution to a real problem. Uh, market thought it was unique to the marketplace. Viability um, thought that it's very doable. 676, six, design market viability. Pre staff total of a 23. Yep. Um, after all of it, we were down to the, actually the two wild cards. We were. And we voted almost, almost unanimously yep, again. Almost. It was a weird week because we all kind of agreed here at Quirky yep. HQ. Doesn't Christine Torpy with your two trade, two tiered barbecue multi tray, a wild card winner this week. Not the highest in numbers, no. but the highest in uh, in sort of staff and retailer and uh, community. Not not really community, but staff and retailer <laughs> um, and uh, and partner buy in. Yeah. Um, and we are really excited about this. We know we're going to kill it, and we think you did a really good job yeah, describing a problem and a solution. So we look forward to working on your product. Congratulations, Christine Torpy and Charles Bailey. Both yeah. of you are quirky inventors. Both of you have products we're very excited about. And both of you are coming to New York to work with us nice. um, to make these products a reality. So um, have a great weekend, guys. Yeah. Um, and we love you. And um, that's it. That's Thanks. It, right? Thank you. Thank you. Woo!